This is Alexei from Ace5 Studios and I saw people on C4D Cafe asking about how could I use 3D Coat with Cinema 4D and since I use both 3D Coat and Cinema 4D I decided to make a quick video to show you how awesome 3D Coat is. This is a mouse in Cinema 4D, I will show you how to unwrap it but first I will show you 3D Coat's sculpting tools which are pretty cool. They have two sculpting modes, which is Voxel and Surface. Surface is what you get in Cinema 4D and what you get in ZBrush. Well, it's similar to that, where you move around polygons and points with brushes. Voxel sculpting, on the other hand, is kind of like sculpting a 3D grid of pixels. So you don't move polygons around, you move subline, you move the pixels under it. You can't see that here, but you will see when I demonstrate it. So we got a grow brush, let's make it a bit weaker. Let's just grow some polygons on top, just out of this object. And if we switch to wireframe mode, the W key, you'll see that the polygons are still evenly distributed and also they look kind of similar here and here. That's because this is a mesh being pulled over the voxels, which are like 3D pixels. And the cool thing about this is something you can't do with Surface, is if we make this a bit smaller and a bit stronger, and we hold the control key to push through, we can cut holes in stuff. And that is really neat. You know, you can, for example, make a big and you can cut a hole through the whole sphere. That is something you can't really do, you know, in Cinema 4D or in ZBrush, because that's not how it works. And like if we switch to surface mode here by clicking the S key, you will see in the wireframe mode, if we get our draw brush and we draw and we keep pulling it out, you will see that the polygons are stretching. See, because we're actually moving the polygons up here. And here they're very dense, and here they're getting stretched out. And we can keep stretching them, stretching them, stretching them, and they get stretched. And that's what you do in Cinema 4D and ZBrush. So when you try to hold the control key and push through it, it doesn't really work. It just pushes it, and then it eventually goes through the other side, and you get this ugly stuff happening. So that's where voxels let you do cool stuff like this. Now, the next thing that's pretty cool about 3D code is its retopology tools. If we go to retopo, it has a whole bunch of really neat ways to retopologize stuff. For example, you can use strokes and you can draw stuff on it. You can draw more lines like this. And you can press enter and you get polygons. You can also do a pretty nifty thing with, um, if you want to retopologize something like this, you can draw a line and another line and then just draw one line up like this and press enter and you get curves. If you draw more lines, you will get more retopology curves. But that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is the auto retopology tools. If you click on this volume, you right click and you go autopo and you go autopo and you pick your quality and you press OK and you press next and you press next. There's, this is just tools which make the auto topology better but I just want to show you what it does automatically, without anything. And boom, you have a quad mesh, which you can export to cinema and put in a subdivision surface. There are some wonky areas, and some of, sometimes this thing spirals, see it's not really, like here from this side it's okay, but from this side it's kind of all weird diagonally. That's what you put guides in though. We didn't put any guides in. This is just the standard. Autopo. And you can then export this. You can go File, Export, Retopo Object, and let's call this Sculpture 02. And then in Cinema 4D, we can just go File, Open, and we get our Sculpture 02 OBJ. Press OK. And there it is. And you can see it's got a mesh. And you can put it into a subdivision surface, and it's all nice and smooth. How fast was that? Awesome, right? So, next what you're going to want to see is obviously the UV tools because this is handy, but let's see what happens with the UVs. So, let's go open our little rat. There's a little, oops, kind of moved everything here. This is out, this is, I got this from the content browser and I deleted the UV tag, so there's no UV mapping on this. So, we go file, export as an OBJ, and we call this rat. And we press OK. And then we go to our 3D code. We go File, and New. 
and we press don't save and we go UV map mesh and we pick our rat object and here put auto mapping because otherwise it can freeze 3D code if you try to use keep UVs if you don't actually have any UVs so auto mapping and it does this ugly auto mapping nowhere near as good as this auto retopology but that's okay because we're not going to actually use this and you can see it automatically packs it but you can actually paint on this and it's pretty decent like if you go to paint room now um, you can paint there's not really much seams and it works pretty well let's undo that but let's go back to our UV room and let's go clear seams. I want to show you how easy it is to unwrap things in 3D code. So first, let's turn on symmetry. 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 X-axis. Okay, good. Now, to draw a seam, you click on the seams. And as you can see right now, this red mesh on the right, that's what the unwrap right now looks like because there are no seams. Control clicking will delete seams. Shift clicking will select loops. So let's go loop here. And you can see now we have two islands already. And a control shift clicking will remove the loops. Also, you'll notice if we, for example, hold the shift click here on the leg, just go here, we see the legs split up. If we hold the shift click, you will see that the loops don't go through, they only go between selected seams. So that's very handy. So let's split this guy up. Let's get our tail here. Where is our next leg? It's a bit too far out. Let's see, where do we select this leg? Let's select this mesh here, this, oops, this curve here, and this curve, and yes, here, control click this. There you go, now we have our legs. And as you can see, the unwrap right now, it all, like when you roll over something, it automatically tries to unwrap it. So the tail actually unwraps pretty well. But these legs still need some work. So let's shift click here. And as you can see, we get the islands different colors. And on the inside, let's draw some shift click on these seams. And you can see the legs unwrap. See, when you roll over, you can see they're unwrapped. Because then this is where it unwraps. And let's see what we have on the face here, on the ears. Let's draw some little unwraps around the ears so once again here if I click shift it'll go all the way into the ear I don't want that I want it to stop here so now we can shift click this and we can shift click nope that goes all the way around so once again here and there you go untick this and now we have the head here let's also shift click and separate this head from the rest of the body. So we have our underbelly meshes, which run up pretty nicely. Maybe this one goes a bit too far, so let's finish the unwrap here. This is the underbelly. Oh, here, let's also, there you go. So we have the belly and the top part of the mesh. We have the ears, which probably need some more creative unwrapping. And the head, let's see how that's going. Let's unwrap this mouth bit away from the rest of the mesh and this seems pretty clean I mean the eye there is a bit jammed but maybe we can pull it out of the separate mesh and then there you go that should be a bit cleaner and this is the head mesh and there we have it that's, yeah then we can unwrap all the fingers but it doesn't matter it's done that's literally how long it took to unwrap this mesh and now we can go unwrap and you'll see there it is. It's all packed. These objects, this is still the feet where I didn't actually go through and unwrap them properly, and the ears. But you can see it's very quick to unwrap this stuff. And then we can press apply. Don't forget to press apply. Press OK. And now we can go to paint room. And we can paint on this stuff. We can paint some circles here and some circles here and something around the eyes. There you go. And let's paint the nose a bit too. That's it, and that's our mouse, unwrapped and painted. And now we can go File, and Export Objects and Texture, and Rat UV'd. And this is the texture formats, and 
lots of other stuff, but export low poly mesh and press OK. And now we go to Cinema 4D and we go File, Open, and we open our Rat UV object and press OK. The materials don't come in automatically because Cinema 4D can't import OBJ files still. But nevertheless, in color, it's pretty easy to apply. Sculpture thing, and we apply our materials onto it. Let's go, there it is, our UV mesh, our rat UV. And there you go. And we have our UV map, UV rat, with textures on it in Cinema 4D. Pretty quick, right? And that's what's great about 3D code.